things with you in, in quick order. What does minor incursion mean? What about the gossip about President Trump and Ron DeSantis and then the bill about big tech that caught my eye in the Wall Street Journal yesterday? Let's start with clip number 38, Joe Biden yesterday, the president. So I think what you're going to see is that Russia will be held accountable if it invades. And it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, et cetera. All right, Ambassador O'Brien, that's a new category of international aggression. What is a minor incursion? Does it include China swallowing Taiwan? Does it include Russia invading Lithuania? Does it include the Senkaku Islands, of the Aleutian Islands for that? What's a minor incursion? Well, it was clearly a mistake by the president. Uh, the White House has walked it back. Uh, it reminded me of the, the comments that Ambassador uh, April Gillespie made to Saddam Hussein back in July 1990, which Saddam interpreted as a green light to invade. So the, these words have consequences in international diplomacy. I'm sure folks in Kiev are, uh, are quite concerned. Uh, but I, I think the White House is trying to walk it back so that it, it's not viewed as a green light for Putin to to send his little green men or engage in cyber attacks or, or even engage in, uh, in limited conventional attacks against Ukraine, that would be a disaster. And, and I, I don't think that's what the White House wanted. I don't think that's what the president wanted. Uh, but it was clearly a, uh, a major mistake that now needs to be remedied. Now, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you were in the White House as the National Security Advisor for almost two years. Ukraine is an ally of ours, right? They fought alongside of our, uh, us in Iraq and Afghanistan. They are an ally. They're not a member of NATO, but they're an ally that we threw under the bus. No, they're, they're a friend, and, and what we need to do now, uh, the Russians are going to be very carefully watching what we do, not so much what we say. And, and so there, there are a number of steps that we can take. I've talked about this publicly. We need to move a uh, significant number of troops out of Germany and put them in Poland uh, and, and reassure not just Ukraine, but reassure our, our NATO allies of the, in the Baltics and Poland and Romania and Bulgaria and uh, Hungary that we're there for them. And uh, the Germans can defend themselves. They're a rich, powerful country. They don't need as many U.S. troops garrisoned there. We need to get some to uh, Poland. And this is a wake-up call for Germany. They need to they need to show what side they're on. Uh, I was heartened to see the Brits sent eight C-17 flights this week uh, full of, uh, of weapons to Ukraine. Uh, but unfortunately, they did not fly over Germany. They, they took a circuitous route. So we don't know if the Germans stopped them from flying over or not. And then finally, we need to, we need to let Putin know the type of sanctions that will uh, – that'll hit the Russians if they do engage in any type of activity, minor or otherwise. And uh, I mean, we ought to seize the soccer teams of his oligarchs and their yachts overseas and, and let them litigate for years to try and get those back. Uh, if they invade Ukraine, we have to cut them off from the SWIFT system and close down Nord Stream 2 and, and basically kick them out of the uh, the international economy and let the Russians play junior partner to the, the Chinese, their only, their only real ally. And, and, and Vladimir Putin is not going to like to be Xi Jinping's uh, – uh, junior partner in that relationship. So we, we need to let the Russians know how, how brutal this will be for their economy and, and for their standing in the world if they invade Ukraine. I love clarity. Clarity is refreshing. Question number two, there is gossip that President Trump is angry with Governor Ron DeSantis. You are the only person I know who has been to Mar-a-Lago since the election, who talks to the pre former president regularly, and who saw Governor DeSantis with the president in the White House. When you have been to Mar-a-Lago, when you have talked to the president, has he had thrown any shade on Governor DeSantis? No, I, I've never heard any such thing. Uh, the president and Governor DeSantis always had a strong relationship. My guess is this is fake news coming from the media that's trying to stir up some sort of uh, controversy that doesn't exist. Uh, during, during our time in office, uh, when I saw the president with Governor DeSantis dealing with COVID and, and running for re-election, they always got along uh, very well and, and were, were quite cordial with each other. As the president's pointed out in the past, he helped get uh, Governor DeSantis elected uh, to his current position. So uh, I, I think there's a, a strong relationship there. And uh, and I, you know, Donald J. Trump is the leader of the GOP at this point, and I'm sure Governor DeSantis recognizes that, the members of the House and Senate do. And um, so, so I think this is a little bit of a, a fake news story in my view. Not a fake news story is a bill being pushed by Senator Klobuchar of Minnesota and Grassley of Iowa that would lead to the breakup of big tech. Now, I'm very ambivalent about big tech. I want an American national security representative in every board meeting. I want to know what they're doing and what they're making. I'm not sure we need to break them up. You are a national security specialist. What do you think about this bill? Well, look, I wrote about this in the Wall Street Journal uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, and I understand people at our base are very angry at big tech companies, and they've got good reason to with censorship and privacy issues. Uh, 
the fact that the President Trump was was taken off uh, some of the social media platforms, and yet terrorists and autocrats are left on. I mean, that that's terrible. We need to deal with it. But we're on the verge with this Klobuchar bill of giving the Chinese Communist Party a huge gift. I mean, I, they can't believe it. They're watching us. This is an own goal that is, is bigger, bigger than the WTO admission. Uh, Senator Klobuchar's bill would totally uh, hammer and break up these, these massive companies that are engaged in research on AI, on quantum, on machine learning uh, at scale. I mean, they're the only ones who can do it. If you break up these companies into a bunch of small little companies, A, we're not going to get them back, and B, we're not going to get the private research and development that's keeping us ahead, either even or ahead of the Chinese. So, uh, and, and by the way, these bills do nothing to the Chinese and European tech companies. So uh, th- th- this, would, this would take a sledgehammer to our most innovative companies when what we need is a regulatory scalpel that ensures the First Amendment uh, – uh, you know, if the, if the Democrats are serious about protecting America from from big tech, they ought to be banning TikTok and Tencent and WeChat uh, and and Alibaba from from U.S. apps, just like India did. India banned 300 Chinese apps from from India. Uh, President Trump tried to do that with TikTok, uh, but what we've got we've now got a bill that's going to kill American tech companies and 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 take away our R&D lead. And yet, leave TikTok and Tencent and the, and the Chinese Communist Party to to rule the tech world. It just makes no sense. Now, I have uh, sat down with Mark Zuckerberg. I know you know a lot of big tech people as well, uh, the titans of big tech. But I sat down with with Zuckerberg. It's not off the record, and I asked him bluntly, "Are you and is Facebook a patriot?" And he was actually taken aback, and he said, "Of course we are, and I am." And he went through a list of things at DARPA and other places that big tech is working on. I am only concerned about big tech insofar as they are on our side in the struggle with the Chinese Communist Party, with Russia and our other adversaries, including global terrorist organizations. Do you think they are? I think they are, but I think there's more that can be done. I mean, the the good news is we're seeing the big tech companies start to compete for Pentagon contracts, which they hadn't done in the past, uh, certainly with uh, companies like uh, Microsoft and uh, uh, and uh, Google, and uh, you know, we're we're, we're seeing uh, uh, some really impressive technology coming out on quantum, coming out of uh, places like Google and Silicon Valley. Uh, but but we need to make sure they stay on side. The other thing we need to do is we need the DOJ and our immigration officials to ensure that that uh, you know Chinese citizens, especially former members or current members of the People's Liberation Army and People's Liberation Army Navy aren't getting jobs with these tech companies and, and, and stealing from the inside. So we've got to be very careful about the, the threat from not, not, not patriotic, uh, uh, you know, God-fearing Americans of Chinese descent, but of, but of actual Chinese communists who get into our universities or, or get into these companies and then exploit the, the technology and send it back to Beijing. We need to make sure the FBI and the DOJ is, is all over that, uh, that situation as well. But I think generally the the U.S. tech companies, with a couple of exceptions of companies that are making more money or as much money in China as they are here, are patriotic. They want to do the right thing for this country. But uh, but look, we've got to address the le- le- legitimate concerns of uh, uh, on privacy and, and, and how our data is being used. We've got to certainly address the issue of censorship on these platforms. And, and those are real issues that have our, you know, on the Republican side, have our base really upset with these companies. We need to deal with that. But, but breaking them up and, and seeding the field to, to Beijing and and letting Beijing take over big tech worldwide is just not the answer. I always disclose, I own Amazon and Palantir. They're the only two stocks I own. So people can judge for themselves. I don't think I have a conflict of interest because it doesn't matter that much to me. But what matters to me is that the national security of the United States not be injured by whatever happens in the big tech arena. Does the Klobuchar Grassley bill injure national security? In my view, it absolutely does. It, it, it hobbles. The, the companies that, that have the scale to do the AI and quantum and machine learning research that we need done as a, as a country to stay ahead of the Chinese, and it leaves the field wide open for, for Beijing-based, communist-controlled uh, companies to, to take over worldwide tech. And, and by the way, when you talk about uh, you know, patriotic companies, Palantir is a great company that uh, it's, it was founded by Peter Thiel, who's a, a friend of yours and mine, and uh, and is a great patriot, uh, and, and and that company is doing tremendous work with our law enforcement and intelligence uh, agencies and, and the Pentagon. So so there are great great American tech companies that are really uh, pulling the oars in the in the uh, in the big power competition that we're engaged in right now. Ambassador O'Brien, I know you're on the West Coast. Thank you for getting up early. Minor incursion, gossip about the president, Ron DeSantis, big tech, all in ten minutes. 
I appreciate it. That's why you were the National Security Advisor and very good at it. Stay tuned, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt.